Welcome to Survivor NSFW. We've got a treat for you. You may not have seen him since Survivor Fiji as he was rolling away in a truck that Yao Man gave him. But here he is. <laughs> Dreams heard. Dreams, it is an honor to get to talk to you, man. Thank you. Dude, I know it's like fair play today sends me a text message and I'm like, you know, I was, I was out on my patio or something and I clicked on it and it's, and it's the it's the whole segment where it's the challenge where Yao Man throws the axe, wins the truck. And he's like, oh, uh, man, dreams. How bad do you need this car? And you were like, bro, no one but me. Like, everyone's got a car but me out here. Like, I need this fucking thing bad. And he's like, cool. So, Dreams, I'm going to give you this Ford F-150 truck, brand new. 2008. Yeah, 2008. <laughs> if, if, like, if, so we're in the final six right now. If at the final four, you and I are still in the game and you, Dreams, which you probably, it's obvious you would win immunity looking at that freaking physique of yours. If you win immunity, you're going to give the immunity necklace to Yao Man. You agreed to it. You said, you know, God's honest truth or whatever you say. Go to the fast forward to the tribal council, and you are definitely emotionally distraught. This is a crazy game for a million dollars. So I get the fact that it's a battle emotionally uh, within yourself. You're playing this game. You're you're trying to separate real life from from friendships, etc. Yes. I mean, kind of put put us through this decision making process at that moment in time, dreams. Well, go go back first. Go back to when Yao Man originally makes the proposal. What's going through your head then? Okay, so now before all of that, it wasn't a, on the on show. It, 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 you know how the production is. Sure. Yeah. We all sat down by the little tree that everybody fall asleep under, and, and get bit by ants. We all sat down on it. We just like, you know what? This is. We knew that it's talked about being tough and so on, so on. So we said, hey, this is a fort challenge. We know what the stuff tough and stuff is. This is a fort challenge. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, right. We all agreed. We all agreed. If it's a truck challenge, they said throw it to Dream. He's the only one out here without a vehicle. So listen, truth be told, I didn't even have my license at the time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right, and it was right. no point for me to have my license because I didn't have no transportation. I'm not gonna be paying insurance, and you know what I'm saying. It was no. Yeah. Well, why, why, why are you gonna pay twenty bucks for a license if you ain't gonna use it? Yeah, it is no point. Right. It was right. no point. So I didn't even have a license at the time, person. Oh, hold so, on, hold on. Pause real quick. So, so you hear the whole tough thing? You're just like they're giving away a truck. I I did a show called Celebrity Bull Riding. Ty Murray, the greatest bull rider ever. He's he's training us. And we, we arrive onto his ranch each, like uh, there's two two celebrities per truck. We're in Ford F-150 trucks. You know, the, the sponsor of the of the uh, professional bull riding tour, the PBR tour, is it's the Built for Tough tour. And so they're, they're, they're talking the entire, they're like, you know, Built for Tough. And, I, and I'm sitting over there like a fucking shill. I'm just like, you know, I'm going to have a, have a built tough ride today, guys, you know, and I'm looking at, and so we finally, so we're, we're learning to ride these bulls. I end up riding at that time, 10 bull. I, I ride 10 bulls. I get, I get seven successfully, much greater percentage than anyone else. We get to Nashville for an actual PBR event. Once again, built for tough series, you know, they got the trucks out there and I can learn just like, and they're, and they promise nothing. And I'm just like, if anyone gets to eight fucking seconds on this fucking bull, they're leaving with that fucking truck. I'm getting this fucking truck. So anyway, so everybody rides. No one gets more than fucking four seconds. Rocket Ishmael was, was our best rider. His bull went crazy and like, like three seconds in just fucking dumped him. And I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, if Rocket's fucked, I'm like triple <laughs> fucked. Because I like, like compare me to Rocket Ishmael. You don't. <laughs> well, you can, but you'll lose. You know? So, so I'm like, fuck. And, and Ty Murray's fucking, he's just like, you got to do this. You got to do this. Everyone sucked. You got to, and I'm just like, I'm your last hope. Fuck you and me. Like we're done. There's no way. And I, and I'm in a, but at the back of my head, I'm just like, sure would like a truck though. So anyway, so I ride, I, I, I the, the bull finally throws me. I look up at the time. It says 7.9. 
and they're like, go challenge it, go challenge. So they have a buzz where you can challenge in, in an actual competition. If you challenge and you're wrong, it's like five grand. And, but you know, I'm just like, well, it ain't, they ain't gonna find my money. You know, <laughs> if they're looking for my wallet, it's down my pants and I ain't giving it to them. So I walk up, I, I give the, 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 uh, the challenge buzzer, I give it double middle fingers, fucking punch, almost break my hand punching it as hard as I can. They review the tape, come back 8.1 seconds. I'm like, fuck yes. I have just won a Ford F-150. And they're like, congratulations, you, you won the show. And I'm just like, and here comes the truck. Here comes truck never fuck i'm like motherfucker i'm like i shield for these motherfuckers for 11 days straight <laughs> saying built for tough johnny fairplay not a goddamn so so i i i understood understood your reasoning sitting in that tree like you know apparently cbs had more money than cmt <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you so the, the the agreement was prior to this challenge Everyone was going to give you the truck out of goodwill. Everybody was going to throw the challenge, give me the truck. Right. We get out there. As, as you can see, the uh, as the challenge start off, people was falling off the beam, falling off the beam. Me, Earl, and Cassandra was just flying through. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, everybody's doing it. Everybody's mm-hmm. doing it. You know, um, all of a sudden, they put the jets on us. I mean, and we we catch up at the end. Like, we're head, neck and neck. We're digging, 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 digging. Now, now Boo was, was going to play the game for him. Yeah, well, Boo, Boo could use a truck. <laughs> but so, so they, they, I'm talking about we neck and neck, we in the sand digging now. Come on, I had Cassandra on the team now. She wasn't much of a digger. She wasn't trying to get those nails all messed up. <laughs> so, so me and Earl digging all, his wrist hurting already. I'm in a, I'm talking about dog digging. My fingernails got mad dirt under it. So anyway, they win the challenge. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, like. Come on, I thought we talked about this. So he turns to me. He says, a dream. Now there was more to it in the video, too. He said, I want to make a I want to make a deal. He said, I want to make a deal with dreams. I want to make a deal with everybody else. He said, because we all agreed. He said, I I it was a two point, two part deal. The deal was for me, for my personal part, was to give him the immunity idol had we made it to the final four. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. He looked at the crowd, well, not the crowd, but the rest of the uh, contenders and said, All right, now the deal for y'all is that we all vote my way. Can we make that agreement? Everybody looked around and was like, Yeah, we'll all vote your way. Right? Yeah. Now, so boom, he gave me the truck. He sent himself to Exile Island to find an idol. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, now, I don't think he sent himself to Exile Island because he was that nice of a guy. He didn't want to uh, <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. I, I you played with you. I played yeah. with Yao Man on fans versus favorites, and he yeah. wasn't the guy I saw on TV. No, no. Well, he wasn't the guy you saw on TV because he didn't have Earl with him. Because you got to remember, without Earl, he would have just been. You know how old folks get voted out first. <laughs> if, you're, if you're old, I don't care what you are. The younger folks just vote you out. They, they don't get they relate to you. So There's they no relatability. Out. Exactly. Yeah. So so without Earl, he would have been gone before Sylvia. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? But yeah. he buddy with Earl, which was good for him. That was smart on his behalf. But anyway, so everybody made that deal. He sent himself to Exile Island, and I'm sitting here celebrating, and then I thought about it. I'm like, whoa. Whoa. Wait a minute. Now we get back to the thing, and he's on Exile Island. After I leave, we, I mean, I go to the challenge and then I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I get back to the place and I'm like, whoa, you know, Cassandra's like, listen, you know, he, that's all strategy. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sitting here in a, in a, I'm in an ecstasy right now. Like happy day. Yeah, yeah. And then Cassandra snaps me out of it. And I'm like, whoa, you're right. She said a million dollars could buy five of those trucks if you want. And I was like, yeah. Or more. Like, <laughs> chance. She said, you know, they're going to, she knows you're going to, because we had a final four deal. By the way, that's why I had to get rid of, uh, you remember when I got rid of Michelle and I was like, oh, well, I got rid of her. And I was like, well, I don't know. I just, I didn't know. I didn't know who, was. I couldn't know. I didn't, couldn't trust her. But the real reason I got rid of her because she was tight with the alliance that I wanted to be tight with. And it wasn't space for both of us. Yeah. And that was the alliance of Earl and Cassandra and Yao. Yeah. yeah. She was too tight with all of them. 
You know what I mean? She was more of that messenger. She'll go places and gather oh, intel yeah. and come back. And my alliance was folding on me. And that was the last one to know everything. So that lets you know you're in the bottom of the alliance if you ever watch Survivor. So I was like, man, I'm about to eat these dudes up. I can't wait to stab them all in the back. You know, I didn't like Alex and uh, I like Alex. I didn't like uh, Ed Gordon. Never liked that. Girl. Never, 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 never. If I could punch him in the face and get away with it, I would have done it. <laughs> that, unfortunately, that's not how the world works. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah. on Survivor. It's a bad consequence. He'd have cost me a million dollars right there. Yeah. Right. So, you know. So I mean, you, it was kind of already planned. I mean, Yao Man was a big strategic threat in the he game. Was, he was strategic. I mean, sometimes, like I say, fair play know how it is in Survivor. Sometimes you're game, game, game. But you're there with the people for so long, it's a, it's, it takes an emotional toll, and they become kind of like family. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? It's game, 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 family, family, family. You sit there, and all you do is talk, talk, talk amongst each other to the point where y'all really start caring about each other. But you cannot forget, we are playing a game for a million. You know what? It's people that died over a million dollars. Oh, yeah, you get what I'm right. saying? Yeah, right. Two, for a million dollars, I'll put my shoes right now, walk to one of y'all house, and fight you in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please don't do that. I will not pay you. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> G- for a million dollars, walk walk in the North Carolina, find Johnny Fire, uh, John, Johnny Fairplay, and fight him in the parking lot in the in the Walmart parking lot for a million dollars. Oh well, you, you can go. I, I won't I'm be a call Walmart. Fair play up. I'm be like, listen, man, fifty thousand dollars. Send me your address. Fifty thousand dollars. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you know so this game, I mean, was it as crazy like going in like? Before you played Survivor, were you a fan of the show? How did you get on the show? Um, actually, one of my friends did Amazing Race. Her name was uh Kelly. Okay. They were two cheerleaders, Kelly and Jamie, and uh, mm-hmm. and they did Amazing Race, and they were doing their thing, and I heard about it. And then uh, one day, and and for some reason, I think Kelly started working with CBS after. You know, the blonde hair chick. She was really pretty. Everybody liked her, really perky, but she was also smart, and mm-hmm. uh. So she started working for CBS after that, and then she suggested me, and then she called me and was like, hey, do you, would you like to do Survivor? And I was like, yeah, but you know, where I'm from, stuff don't, good stuff don't happen unless you make it go up out there and make it happen. You know right. what I'm saying? The best stuff that happens is you get the job that you want to type, John. You know what I'm saying? So, so was it, like, yeah. are you that type of person, Dreams? Are, are you like that go-getter? Because that's the way I am. It's like, if I want something, I want to make this shit happen, and I go for it. So is that is that kind of your whole persona of how you are in life I, yeah 100 percent. because that's the only way you're gonna get it especially mm-hmm. in north carolina it ain't nothing too big coming from here you know what i mean mm-hmm. unless you the big guy that's making it happen right you know what i'm saying right so um so i i went i remember they called me i didn't believe it was cps they sent me this long behind contract i was like i'm not doing it. i'm not doing the show i'm not <laughs> doing the show. that's it yeah. i'm not gonna read all of this stuff yeah. And sign all of these papers. There's no way. Yeah. And so, but anyway, I ended up doing it. I had a a, a friend at the time who was like, "Oh, I'll just sign it for you," and she did all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. It, they sent me the contract, and because uh, I was like a last minute at like like I basically got my stuff, and I I was at the hotel like two weeks later, and so they sent me the contract, and I was like. They're like, uh, we need that contract back immediately, and I was like, well, I need to send it back to Virginia to my lawyer. And they're like, well, we have eighty thousand people that that don't need to send it to a lawyer, and I'm like, well, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was one part of the contract that I read, man. It was like a death certificate. I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. Man. It says it like, you will die in that contract. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, it's saying mean, if you die, pretty much if say if you die, they are not responsible. If you jump out of an airplane. Your air, your parachute do not deploy. They are not responsible for that. Kind yeah, of that's right. I'm like, oh crap. Whatever. Yeah, so it kind I of freaked you out. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So, so dreams like so you you get the truck. Like, did you actually? Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Go, go I just want to know, did it? Be, did you get the truck? That's all I want to know. Oh yeah, I got the truck. Okay, okay, cool. I they did try not to send it to me. They try okay. not to send me the truck. I called yeah. Earl, and Earl, uh, he called somebody and called me back and was like, hey man, go to the place and get the truck. Or he he called somebody that called me, and then they called me and and they, they person was like, hey, go so and so, go face and get the truck because I, I even after the show was over, I still didn't have the truck. Hmm. Do you still have it today, or where did it end up? No, 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 no. So, so I traded because that truck was a gas guzzler. You got it. That was a 
<laughs> and, 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 and I don't know if you remember, at that time, gas prices was like jacking up super high. So I traded that truck for a hybrid. Good call. And then, and then later on, I was like, yeah, you know what? I didn't need a hybrid. I didn't need, because even though I had a hybrid, it was like a hybrid SUV. And it was me and my son. And it was only two of us. So I didn't need that big of a car. So then I traded that. My favorite car, really, it's the weirdest thing in the world. If I was a millionaire, the car I would choose to have is a Honda. I know, I know, it's it's weird. I everybody, I, but that's my favorite car. So I seen a Honda that I wanted, and I was like, you know what? And with the taxes and everything, I said I'm gonna trade it. I'll have money to pay the taxes. I don't gotta deal with it. Boom, went traded it for a, a Honda, right? Yeah. Boom. I was on my way to school, and the cable man, the cable man, hit the back of me. Oh shit! The cable man. Dude. Somebody did not get that cable that day. I'm telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody cable was not turned on that day. But so he hit me, and and and, and now I have a rough school because I kept coming late, and the teacher was like, "You, now nah, you always." I'm like, "Listen, I will not be late again." And the cable man the next day hit me on my way to school. Damn. I had a girl vouch for me like, "Yeah, I seen him. He got hit. He got hit." I had to come in fake like I'm limping. <laughs> you know, I got hit by a car, you know what I'm saying? Oh my god. So not only is the truck a big story on Survivor, it has an epic saga after Survivor. I love it. it the curse of the car. Yeah. The curse of the car. Everybody know that. Yeah, the curse but, of the car. Which which got Burton Burton won the uh the what is a G, GMC Envoy. It had had the the camping gear or whatever and like he won it and and Burton Burton had chose me to go with him on that reward and and so he he won the, won the truck and he comes here he's just like you can't tell anybody fair play. He was like the curse of the car. You can't tell anybody. And I come there, I'm just like, I ain't telling anybody. And the whole time in the back of my head, I'm like, unless we final two. And I'm like, and my speech <laughs> opens with, you know, it's just like, hey, how was everybody doing? Burton won the car. Just wanted to let everybody know. Burton won the car. <laughs> Fuck him. Give me the million dollars. We good. So, but uh, he, so he had won the GMC Envoy and he, he had to go to, I think whatever dealership he, I can't remember if he had to go to the, uh, the dealership in California or the one back in Texas, but whatever dealership he went to, he was like, yeah, I don't want this. And uh, he, he traded out for something else because they gave him whatever that was worth. They were just like, you can use that towards, towards something yeah. else. So I'd love to My see the percentages. Of that. What's that? I said the truck I had was like $65,000. Sweet. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. That so when cool. I traded it out, the taxes, pretty much paid for everything anyways. I had like mad money just chilling. I, I actually, the $100,000 check, I lost it in my car. And Which I forgot all about like it. Like $100,000 check from, from Survivor? Yeah, I lost it. And then I was like, <laughs> and then months later, I was cleaning out my car and I found it. And I was like, oh, shoot. Oh. <laughs> I, I forgot oh. about this check. <laughs> How do you forget about $100,000? I don't know. I don't, everybody asked me that same question. Because... I was so used to being broke that when I, in the interviews and stuff, when people to pay you for the interviews and all that stuff, that that little that money that had trickled down, I was like, I had like ten thousand dollars in the bank, and I was like, man, I, I felt rich already. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that that a hundred thousand, I lost it, and I was like, I did. I looked for it one day, and then the next, the rest of my days just went by, and I didn't think about it no more until I found it. Did, I mean, did Survivor change your life dreams? Like from yeah. pre-Survivor to post-Survivor, how did Survivor impact your life? Well, first of all, I've never been in another country until then. Mm -hmm. um, never flew in a plane until then. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then, and uh, it it's weird enough. Let me... Uh, I've I've never experienced another culture. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I never right. and they were so different than America's. Like, you know, they were treating people nice. You know, mm -hmm. they were uh, they were kind. And and when, I'm I'm saying the true definition of kind. Mm -hmm. it, it it first of all, I wanted to be more like that. Um yeah. another thing, I being on the show, being out in the wilderness, and I'm sure Johnny will tell you this, being out in the wilderness will change you. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? You you you're more grateful. You you realize the things you took for granted. The family you left back at home is like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to see them. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I need to tell my family I love them more. I need to, you know what I'm saying? I need to hug my son more. I need to, all of that stuff. And then you get home and then you're like, man, food, even food. You're like, man, we wait, we're so wasteful. Oh, all yeah. That stuff. I still carry it. I tell my kids the stories all the time. I tell my kids, listen, man, oh, in other countries, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? Because th- that's important. Because yeah. we're so, we don't see what we have because we were born. It's like telling a fish that he's in water. Mm-hmm. If you told a fish he was in water, he'd look around at you like, what? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So, so when, you ahead, get, when, you, when you get the phone call from Kelly asking you to be on Survivor and you get, you get the contract and all that, have you, had your, have you ever watched Survivor prior to that or like, like, like consecutively no. or like once in a blue moon or ever? <laughs> When I went to California, you you know how they send you to California for the interviews and junk? Yeah. Well, when I went to California, one of the, I don't know what they call, you know, the ladies who come in out your room telling you what time you can eat and all that junk? Yeah. Uh, for the interview things. She brought in, like, the VHS tapes. <laughs> the VHS back in the days. So yeah. she brought the VHS tapes in, and, and I watched, like, the show. I mean, I was there for 14 days. Yeah. No contact with people. I wasn't allowed to talk, you know. So she brought the tapes in, and I was what? like, uh, and I just watched them back to back. Before you watched every season, or did you just pick some? Or No, I watched all of them. It was nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I, I did that. Like, I, I actually unhooked, like, like uh, I brought a VCR with me. I, I had ordered all the episodes off eBay, and uh, they, they had a block on the, uh, on the wall where the coaxial cable connected. And so I spent like an hour and a half getting that undone. And then I hooked up my VCR and, uh, and I was watching cause I, I hadn't seen the show before I was cast. And so I was watching all the episodes in the room, but then I figured out in the VCR, every channel above 100 was every one was individual rooms in the hotel. And at any given time at that hotel in Santa Monica, there are multiple people watching porn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, it was. So I watched a lot of porn those twelve days. <laughs> so, so dreams. After you watched a lot of this, you know, you're watching all these VHS tapes that CBS gave you at the hotel at the casting finals. Did you uh, come up with a strategy going into the game? Did you train and try to prepare? Like this is the kind of game that Dreams is going to play when I get out there. Man, truth be told, I don't know if you ever been on Survivor or not. Mm-hmm. You can do all of that stuff, huh? Yeah, I was on Survivor. Johnny was on Fans versus Favorites one. I was on the second Fans versus Favorites. Okay. Was you the fan or the favorite? I was the fan. I was <laughs> the movie <laughs> playing against returning players. So Man, yes. How did that John? What? Whoa, whoa, whoa! How did let Fair Play be on Fans versus Favorites? He I was a favorite. Be, no way. I I I, 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 I agree. A favorite and a villain. I was I was a favorite villain. <laughs> <laughs> I think man, it was, how, you gonna, how you gonna be a favorite and they can't love you and hate you. I I, I think it was bad casting. <laughs> Maybe they love to hate you. Yeah, it was bad casting. <laughs> so, so 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 while you're watching all these seasons on VHS, like who did you see and you were like, I want to play like that? Man, I seen I seen uh Richard. I remember the first season, Richard Hatch, and he was a. Uh, he was feeding people, and I was like, man, that's a good strategy. But I got there, man. I had the energy to be doing all of that. Mm-hmm. I remember your season, Johnny, man. That was – I was, like, sitting there like, oh, my God. Like, I was so heartbroken. I was like, man, his grandma was supposed to be there. <laughs> oh, his grandma was supposed to be there, and she died. Man, that is so sad. And then, uh, man, that was perfect. That Johnny played a perfect game, bro. Well, apparently not. I didn't win, but I. <laughs> but, but doggone it, you had it. You had yeah, it. I was right there. Shoot, I mean, you was untouchable for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So no, no, nobody, I, could, nobody getting rid of the guy who grandma just died. Yeah. So, so <laughs> was was I an influence on your game? <laughs> Man, I I couldn't. The thing about the game, all this, any strategic thing you wanted to play, just. I mean, being out there, it you just it just went out the window. Yeah, I thought, just natural I thought, instinct takes over. I thought maybe I could tell a lie that was going to help, and I was like, "Oh man, it's just it just I just could not like, you know how some people you like, some people you hate. Mm-hmm. Every strategy, like I said, you could strategically go out there thinking that you're going to do this and do that, 
And that jump will go straight out the window the first challenge. Mm -hmm. You like that. I, I can't hit a player honest game or I can't hit a lie and cheat. And it's just, man, it's, I don't see how you did it, fair play. Because that jump, I, I don't know if, I don't, you know, how, so, would you, Tor would you Tor uh, ask them to do it before y'all got there? Yeah. Yeah. So that was, I, I, that was brilliant. I, just, just, just evil, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dreams, you saw Johnny make the first, like, really big, notorious move in Survivor of this controversy. And I think you might have the second huge controversy with that truck decision. What was the reaction to you when you didn't give immunity to Yao? Did people hate you on the internet, or what was that like? But man, so I was, first of all, the people in my hometown, you know how America is. America is, like, a traitor to their own people. Like, if you ever go to Brazil and you're against a Brazilian, nobody in Brazil is going to pull for you. Nobody. Yeah. You know, yeah. all the Brazilians going to pull for their Brazilian person. Yeah. If you're in America and, and you're going against a Brazilian, some people going to pull for you, some people going to pull for the Brazilian. <laughs> but in my hometown, people was, like, against me. I'm like, yo, I'm I'm, I'm hometown boy right here. You're like, uh, the news report, the the, the reporter, I did a I did an interview with the reporter, being nice. You know what I'm saying? This is after the release and everything of all the characters on the show and everything. So I was just, you know, I ain't give no information away on that. And but I was just like, you know, talking to him. It was a good job. You know, everybody was nice on the show and blah. blah, blah. So the whole truck thing, she spun off and like put my address in the newspaper and everything. So I go outside after the, this this very episode of me yawking y'all man the truck and all of that stuff. Now now the the, the episodes the, the the season's coming to its end, right? Yeah. Because that was like near the end. That was the next I last episode. One day, I go outside one day because I'm enlisting in school at this time. I was like, I'm gonna finish school, blah blah blah. Man, I go outside one day, and and uh, somebody's like outside pacing back and forth at my house and like. Oh, are you dreams? I was like, what? Yes, I am, for a matter of fact. And then another guy did it. And then I was like, uh, I, I looked at him. I was like, hey, man, can I help you? And he's like, you dream? I was like, yes, I am dreams. It's an old white man. And uh, he was like, hey, uh, nice to meet you, man. I thought that was you. And he like ran up, kind of scared me to death, you know, um, shook my hand. Hey, man, excellent game, man. I'm a big fan. I, but I was scared. I was like, I thought he was about to like pull out a knife and stab me in the back or some Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Oh, man. Literally. Yeah, right. Yeah. I was at the airport and uh it was this lady at the airport that was working at the airport. She obviously watched the show. Bro, she gave me the worst treatment. She <laughs> called me a scumbag. And if I oh. wasn't in a rush, I would have went and told her boss. But I ain't no snitch. You know what I'm saying? I was like, uh, <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna snitch on her. I know she did. <laughs> telling her opinion. Yeah. She called me a scumbag. I'm like, yo, this lady don't even know me. She, she know to show me like what I would have done. Now, it's a million dollars, a show for a million dollars. They lucky I went out there like biting people and like like putting like killer bees in people's sleeping bags and <laughs> whatnot. <laughs> like mm -hmm. trying to get them eliminated. You know, putting snakes on your, uh, yeah. <laughs> having snakes go to the, the train with you and junk, you know? Like, it's a game for a million dollars. You know, people do crazy stuff for me. I'm just, all I did was take a dude truck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, th I think popular opinion has turned around on that a little bit. We've had Yao Man on the podcast, and I think Yao Man is uh, a little more of a wild card than you might give him uh, credit for being on CBS. So, I hear yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Hey, see, here's the thing. I knew what I knew Yao Man. I knew Yao Man personally. Like, seriously, seriously, Wild Man. I, I, I actually talked to Yao Man. I think like a year ago, mm -hmm. too. I was just talking, we were just talking, just catching up. I talked to Earl like a couple of days ago. He had called me out the blues. Like I ain't talked to Earl in like a long time. I always talked to Rocky, but uh, but yeah, that's cool. So he, you and Rocky have maintained a friendship. Yes, it's weird because the people that it, it was seen like I didn't get along with, I actually got along with. Rocky wasn't fake, you yeah. know. Rocky, that was Rocky. Yeah. He was just, he was just. You know, he couldn't smoke his cigarettes. And you know how people get when they can't smoke their cigarettes. And he just, he carried his emotions on his sleeve. You know, that he was just that. If you with him, you with him. You're against him, you're against him. But he was real dude. I like him. And I, I always like Rocky. 
And now we'll take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors. Any fool can climb a wall or crawl through sand, but as every fan knows, survivor challenges are won or lost at the puzzle. The most successful players are puzzle masters, and you can be one too. Fair play, Perplexers Puzzles creates handmade miniature replicas of many of Survivor's greatest and most challenging puzzles. Find out if you have what it takes by visiting the Perplexers Puzzle Store on Etsy or simply visiting SurvivorPuzzle.com. Enter promo code FAIRPLAY, F-A-I-R-P-L-A-Y, at checkout for a 10% discount. And let me tell you, I'm hanging out on my patio on these beautiful summer nights. I have uh, Zach Hacker coming over to my house, and we did the fire puzzle, the season 40 puzzle. I got the tree puzzle, and Zach was like, dude, these things are fucking awesome. So if you are a fan of Survivor, as Zach is, and I know he has a true authentic Survivor puzzle that I have personally done, These Perplexers puzzles are the real deal. So go to SurvivorPuzzle.com right now. Enter promo code FAIRPLAY at checkout for a 10% discount. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed. This episode is brought to you by Magic Spoon. Growing up, cereal was one of the best parts of being a kid. But I had to give it up because I realized it was full of sugar and junk that you really shouldn't eat. I've been trying to cut down on carbs, sugar, unhealthy food, and realize I basically can't eat anything anymore. I mean, guys, it's like you try to eat healthy, but you're like, what am I going to eat for breakfast? It sucks. But I tell you what, with Magic Spoon, you have zero sugar, 12 grams of protein, only three net grams of carbs in each serving. You have four flavors, so if you're picky... You have flavors to choose from. You have cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry. And on top of that, it tastes amazing. Honestly, guys, it's too good to be true. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. I tell you what, guys. I mean, growing up, I would eat these sugar cereals. I would eat cream of wheat, and I would pour all the sugar on it. And I thought, man, that's that's uh, what you do as, as breakfast eaters. But no, you want to get Magic Spoon. And our listeners have a great deal. Zach, tell them how they can get a great deal through our podcast for Magic Spoon Cereal. Just go to magicspoon.com slash survivor to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use promo code survivor at checkout to get free shipping. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. That's magicspoon.com slash survivor and use the code survivor for free shipping. We thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring the podcast. Man, I love the Magic Spoon. The cocoa, the fruity, the frosted, the blueberry. I don't know which one I love the most. This week, it's the fruity, but you never know next week. Go to magicspoon.com slash survivor, promo code survivor. Get yourself some free shipping. All right, That's great. Are there other members of your cast that you still stay in touch with? You said you heard from Earl. Not really. Cassandra, every now and then. I mean, I I should be tighter. I I guess that's my fault for not really keeping in touch with her. Because, I mean, we still get along. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yao, Earl. I mean, what's your relationship with Yao Man after after that whole truck debacle and everything? Are you guys tight? Yeah, like what, what, what was it like like at the finale and like after the finale? Well, his family was next to my family and they were like crying and junk and like looking at my family. His his daughters got up and walked off and you know, it's like wow. but but here's the thing, it was a game. It wasn't like I took his I went to his house and took his truck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> I want to go to Yao Man's house and take his truck right now. <laughs> like, Yao Man already has some transportation at home, man. He already had two cars at home. He told me himself. So, you know, he wasn't missing out on the truck. Yeah. He, he, some kind of new, he got some kind of new fancy whip the other day. Oh, yeah? See, he didn't need the truck at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, uh, so you're you're watching the seasons in the hotel room before you go. Uh, when you get out there, this this is kind of a uh, uh, 
uh, a semi new concept. I, I don't. So Cook Islands was the first to do the the race divided tribes, and then Fiji yes. followed suit. Had you guys seen Cook Islands before you left, or not? Or not yet? I did. Okay. See, I seen Cook Island, but I didn't. It, it was still airing or something. Yeah, I, I, they were probably like, like, if they're if they're on a similar schedule to us, you probably saw like the first four or five episodes. But, but I, I recognize how they divided it up. That's yeah. why in the first episode of our season, now we had racially divided stuff too. Yeah. I was officially divided and a girl left. So it changed the game. Somebody left right before we got out there. So it changed the game. And the thing was, they were trying to make me seem like something different. I was like, yo, who's all white here? I, I knew who was black. It ain't hard to see the black people, but you got the white people and, and like some of the Hispanics were like Alex. He was Hispanic. Hey, Gordo, he was Hispanic. He was lighter than you, you know? Um, <laughs> Lisi, she was Hispanic. Can you believe that? Come on. <laughs> Dreams, can you talk about why, uh, I think her name is Melissa McNulty, who quit right before the show started. What happened there? I don't know, but I like that girl. She was cool, and I was like, man, I was trying to get her not to quit. Like, no, 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 no. She was like, I just can't do it. I can't, I can't. So she, was she like, quit? Her. Like, when did she quit? Like, when, when we were you- walking, she quit when we was walking to the boats. Oh my, like, what, did they already start filming? Like, no, 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 no. So you walk to the, so you, you've been there. So yeah, right. Well, you're each, on each, like each season, starts, each season yeah. starts different. Okay, so okay. probably. Okay, so I'm going to explain. We're, we're at the Ponderosa just getting the layout of the land and they telling yeah. us all the rules. And, Survivor and, and school. We're mm-hmm. in these tents yeah. and, and, and we don't know when we're going. So anyway, it's the day of and everybody's moving out and we're all in the line and we can't talk to each other. And we're like six feet apart. It was like the coronavirus kind of really. So <laughs> so we all walking out and we can't talk. We six feet apart and we just and I I see her getting out of line. Now I gave her a piece of gum one time we was in a van and I was like, man, maybe I can make a friend with this girl. She seemed like she was a comp uh, like she seemed like she was ready to go. Like she like she seemed like a good ally, somebody you want to align yourself with. But yeah, right. um we were just walking and she was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I, I I I just can't. I just can't. I, I won't have my phone, and I just I just can't. And I was like, what? That's what she worried about her phone. I was about to be like, yo, I'll sneak you in the phone. Just get back in line. <laughs> so what what happens then? What happens I'll sneak then? The phone in for you. Just get. Uh huh. Yeah. So what? So she basically bails before you get on the boat to film your introduction thing. So do yeah, they man. just pause? Like, is it like pu- press the pause button and bring in somebody else? How did nope. this play out? No? They, we walked to the boat. Boom. It was 19 of us. So they couldn't do the five black, five white, five Asian, five Hispanic. So it was only, uh, it was four whites. I think she was white. Yeah. I think she was white. Yeah. She looked white. That is it was hard to tell. It was really hard to tell them. All. all I knew was the Asians and the, and the black people. That is insane. Because I mean, is that the Zach? Is that the first time this has happened? And is yeah, it's the only time that Survivor's ever filmed with an odd number of players. Wow. Because usually they have like a backup they person, but, I guess, but yeah. I guess the alternates or maybe, are maybe not they, out on on location, are they, Johnny? Maybe, maybe that was the cause of the alternate. Okay. Well, if you think if they're going to do racially divided tribes, they would have had to have a backup male and female of every race. So you're talking about. A lot that's, of backups. That's a lot of alternates. So was this the that's last time? That, was this the yeah. last time that Survivor did a race divided tribe? Oh yeah, game? they yeah. Lo- they lost all their sponsors for Cook Islands. Uh, well, I, uh, no, I guess I guess a lot of them. Uh, the, Is that not crazy though? Just because the, you racially divide something to lose your sponsors, like that is yeah. crazy. Like you gotta you gotta think about like what is that saying? What does that say about the sponsors? Yeah, what yeah. is that saying? Like, that's crazy. So, because I don't like, uh, like they were already filming, like, like they they had already filmed Cook Islands, and then as said, Cook Islands is is a few episodes in. You guys are already out there. The deal's already done with Ford, and then it's after that season where there's. I don't think there's been a has there been a car giveaway since BG? No, I don't know. That was probably it. like well. We can't have this happen in the well, game. Well, you, 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 <laughs> you didn't help that process. Yeah, we, can't, we can't have this happen in the game. They're, they're calling and threatening to 
Y'all gonna blow up the CBS building because this guy took this guy's truck. <laughs> so, so you 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 received a lot of hate from the fans for for that move. Oh were yeah, you, were you on? Did were you online? Like, were you on Survivor Sucks and stuff like that? Seeing the feedback, or you were like, "Fuck that! I don't need to read." Oh, that. No, 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 no. I just just made a Facebook. I just got a Facebook like right after Survivor, I think. And I, I just I didn't know how to work it. I had no point of being on it. You know what I mean? It was just uh, I didn't really get to see all of that stuff. I I seen it in my, people were sending it to my Facebook account and stuff though. But I wasn't on the the blogs and stuff. I, I just wasn't mm, uh, like computer savvy because I like I said I was you're new lucky. to everything. To you're lucky. Now. You're lucky. They <laughs> they were really mean on Survivor Sucks. <laughs> hey, that's that's cool. That's cool. I mean, I had people calling me the N word, this N word, that. Which, like I said, nothing new to me. Long as nobody put their hands on me, we all good. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody gonna have their opinion. Now, now, I was telling somebody recently the other day, had I done that, if I do it, if I do rip y'all man off in a truck, I'm a scumbag, I'm this, I'm the N-word, this. But if Johnny Fairplay do it, he's like the greatest player of all time. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> Seriously. They're like, oh, we love Johnny. He just, he's, so, he's so good. He's so... Uh, they didn't. They didn't like me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where you got this edit that that that, that I'm well liked. <laughs> no, no. People I was like, when, no, when I did the day grandma lie, that that was the same week that Saddam Hussein was captured. The front page New York <laughs> Post. The headlines read, "The most hated man in America." Picture of me. Saddam's on page two. I never killed oh, anybody. Oh, I fake oh, killed my grandma. <laughs> he killed <laughs> hundreds, at least hundreds of people. I'd imagine. <laughs> A lot of people hit me in the inbox. I used to, I sit back and I'm like, listen, man, get out of TV land. Go, go do something. Besides, I mean, I'm talking about long letters. Like I couldn't even read it. All. I'm like, man, I'm tired of reading already. Yeah. Like this, I don't even feel like reading. I could just see what this whole thing is about. You're a jerk. I can't believe you do that to somebody like y'all, man. I'm like, man, this is all TV editing and whatever. Y'all man ever, ain't paying for my kid diapers. Were you ever physically attacked? No. Oh, see, somebody I, I did say somebody did say I'll be at the finale, and as soon as I see you, as soon as you walk through this carpet, the red carpet, I'm gonna spit in your face. I told him I gave him a fair warning. I said, "Man, you do that, it will be the last face you ever spit in. That's guaranteed." I told, him, I said, right. nine out of ten doctors wouldn't recommend that. Yeah, yeah. and no right. one spit in your face. No one spit in my face. Yeah. I've I've been knocked unconscious. I I don't even know three or four times, like like from behind, like like no not way. in my face. Yeah. See, you should have been black, Johnny. Yeah. They would have never did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they would have never did that, man. So now I got I got death. I, I I changed my number three times after my first season. No way. They yeah. why would they hit you like that, bro? That's that's messy. See, they yeah. should. They are lucky we went in together. We was walking. If we'd have been walking together, and somebody would have hit you. They would have to hit me when they and like I said, they'd have hit you. I'd have already turned around swinging. It oh, probably would have yeah. been your grandmama. Whatever. <laughs> we should we should have oh, hung out oh, sooner. Sorry, I'm sorry, Miss Fairplay. <laughs> Dude, I would love to see you and Dreams fair play on a tribe. I mean, Dreams, are you still watching Survivor today? Like, okay. I, yeah, man. I'm a what I like to do, man. I love competition, so I like to look at competitive shows. So I watch Survivor, Amazing Race, uh. Have y'all seen that uh, sh- uh, show? Uh, I watched Big Brother. Um, Floor is Lava? Huh? Floor is Lava? I-, I haven't watched Floor is Lava. I heard about that. Well, Floor is Lava. It, it just, it's the number one show on Netflix right now. I'm, uh, we- we'll-, we'll talk after the podcast. Okay. Is uh, that good, though? We'll talk after the podcast. All right. It's great. Do you watch it, though? Yes, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's it's, it's it's very entertaining. People, it's a fun. It's a people fun could show. potentially be watching you watching it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so so you dreams, still, you so still, you still watch. watch? Yeah, you still watch Survivor. Yeah, cool. Yeah, go ahead. Have Zach. you been con- Have you been contacted to go back at any point? No, have not. I'm, I'm shocked by it's unfair. That. Let me tell you this: it is unfair because my season. I watched my season, my season, and I'm not being biased. If it wasn't for me, most of that stuff wouldn't have happened. Mm-hmm. They would have had, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you, you were the best part of that season without yeah, a doubt. Were, by far, no, I, I don't think, love you or hate you, 
there's no one that doesn't think you're the best. Like, because Yao Man is not as loved if it's not for you. It's it's like Rupert. You know, like the reason yeah. they loved Rupert is because they hated me. <laughs> it's crazy. You're right. That's factual too. So, but the, but there, but I felt like there was such, there there was there was an innocence to you. Like you know, me, I'm just fucking evil. I mean, like my my hero's Ric Flair. That that's that's why I am the, the why I am the way I am. Like like there was I felt like there was an innocence to you. It's just like yes, you made that decision that that some think was was you know a, a bad decision, but for you it wasn't. And I and and I felt just watching that character of dreams on my television. They're, they're, you know, like, you know, love you or hate you, perception of good, perception of bad. I, as I said, there was this innocence where I was just like, this guy's great TV. And I loved watching you. So I'm shocked to hear that you weren't a consideration. That is, for- I'm shocked. I'm just as shocked, bro. I am just as shocked. I'm, I'm like, man, first of all, I'm still in shape. They need to get me back on the show or something. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm still yeah. in? I'm still in great shape uh, to compete. Have y'all saw that show, uh, The Challenge? Yeah. yeah. Man, I really want to do that show, bro. I want to go slam somebody on the head, really. <laughs> Who's that guy name? Who's that guy name? That I want to beat up so bad? Oh. <laughs> hmm? Rogan. Rogan. That's that guy. <laughs> I seen him slam Jay, man. You see how what he did to Jay? Yeah. Bro. You want some revenge? Oh man, I would love to go head to head with him. I'm talking about I'm I'm talking about concussion. I would <laughs> slam him on his head and give him a real life concussion. J- Jay's Not a real guy, but yeah. dog on it. You don't do. I mean, come on, man. You ain't have to do Jay like that. Jay's Word. a real likable guy. Real yeah, man. in real life. So. But Jay's small, and, and he knew that. Yeah, yeah. Jay's like my size, so that's that's yeah. The 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 the, cha- the, the, the people on the challenge are immensely bigger than survivors uh, on a whole. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I want to do it. I really, really, really want to do that joke. I want to. Go out there and compete head to head. I mean, this season is like, like people getting hurt. Yeah. You know what well, I'm saying? People get hurt most seasons on that show. <laughs> you, I'm looking you, at you, it like, yeah, let me let me get some competition. Yeah, you ain't seen me raise my hand for that one. <laughs> Why not, man? You should do it. You definitely go. No, on. no, no. We good. We good. Floor, floor, floor is lava. We're fine. We'll, we'll be all right. <laughs> so, Dreams, you're still in good shape. You'd love to go back on a show. You're living in North Carolina. I think people would love to hear what else have you been up to since Survivor? Well, uh, I train fighters now because, like I said, my Olympic trial run is over. You know, I'm kind of aged out. And so I started training fighters. So uh, one of the fighters I trained is actually in the UFC. Wow. Uh-huh. So he's number eight in the world, middleweight, Who's that? Derek Brunson. Who's that? Derek Brunson. Okay. So I'm always in his corner if y'all ever look at UFC. Yeah, that's we'll see, we'll see you there. <laughs> so um, um, you, you, also, uh, you also train gymnastics uh, for kids. Have you, have you seen that athlete? athlete a special on uh, netflix yet uh-uh what was it about it's it's about the the girls that uh that were training for the u.s olympic team that dr nasser uh oh guy. oh no 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 i seen the, i seen the thing on that though i i seen the uh i yeah. seen the uh trailer yeah i got like 30 minutes left he he's uh he's a bad dude so yeah yeah, yeah. sick yeah. real sick dude yeah, no, he he uh he does the massage when it when it you know whenever they were hurt or whatever he do the massage and for some reason he he got he went up went where he shouldn't every time I mean like 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 first like one girl report him and then like then like five and then like the next week they're like we're up to thirty and then like the next day they're like we're up to sixty and then, he was like <laughs> the coronavirus yeah he, he was yeah that's yeah he, he's he's a he's a piece of shit <laughs> so, but I, I didn't know like in in your in your gymnastics travels if you ever if you ever ever uh ran across uh dr nasser no never okay. he's a he's he's more of an olympic like yeah. high high level yeah yeah coach you know yeah. but but in uh what's that my brother was coaching tumbling in uh stanford sanford north carolina okay and and uh they had a coach there pop for the same thing man yeah, and, and guess what? He got off. He got off because uh, uh, he had a trial, and he had like the people on the trial, and one of the trial people called him the N word, and so he got off the whole thing 
because of bias. And I'm like, what? Nah, this man need his dude. Like, just they should have took the person off that called him that and then replaced him. Cause mm-hmm. he got off. And then check this out. He moved to another ho- he moved to a different town and was working it again and got caught again. He's oh. in jail. He's doing like 10 years. Wow. It's good he's in jail now. So he- so dreams like you. When you played Survivor, uh, was it 2008? Is that when it was? So it's it's a new game now. You know, we saw season 40, Winners at War, where you had a lot of old school players, a lot of new school players. Seemed like the old school players were, you know, outnumbered and, and voted out early. If you were to play Survivor on a season, you know, future season, season 42, 43, whatever, um, a second chances type season, do you think you could hang – one hundred school level of playing. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. They ain't doing that. And that. You, here's the thing. They're gonna vote out people that's old. They're gonna say, "Hey, he's old. He can't keep up." They're gonna vote out the old people because old people usually can't relate. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, me, though I'm 38, I don't look 38. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? And we're yeah. going to just keep that on the wraps. And I'm going to just act like I'm one of them. If they want to go party, I'm going to party. They want to yeah. get in the water, I'm getting the water. They want to do stupid teenager stuff, I'm doing stupid teenager stuff. I'm with the group. You get right. what I'm saying? But yep. I, I honestly, I mean, compete competition definitely can keep up with them. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, that's what I do. You know, I like, I, I, I have kids that I train. And mm-hmm. I mean, and you got to stay in a level of shape to train them because at some point in time, they're going to want to see it also, you know, right. but, uh, so. So you feel like you could hang in, in 2020 with, oh, with, with, with all the new school type players. Yeah. Right on. I mean, I kind of pulled my hamstring recently running sprints with the kids trying to keep up, but yeah, I mean, my junk coming to a healing point now, but I definitely, definitely love the man. I, I, like I said, I'm, I like to compete. I like to compete. I grew up with it. So if CBS is listening to this podcast, you're saying, CBS, give give me dreams a call. I want to play this shit again. Man, if CBS is listening, they know that I've always wanted to play again. I'm a competitive dude. I would love for CBS to give me that shot. Yeah, I mean, Zach, what do you think, you know, Dreams has said he's never been called back. Like, what what is your thoughts on, like, I mean, you're a huge fan of the show. Yeah. You know, you, you study this game. He was the star of his season. Like, what do you think the deal was there? It's shocking. There's, like, sort of a section of seasons there, uh, Guatemala and Fiji, where there's not a whole lot of attention to a lot of the big players coming back. I don't know if it's something to do with Jeff Probst getting a little checked out at that time. I think that's when he was starting to go into other avenues. I I don't know. I, I personally do find that shocking. Maybe they didn't want to play out the whole truck thing again with the sponsors kind of dropping and adding and changing around in that time. I I don't know. But in your opinion and you, Johnny, out of anyone to be called during that time period to fucking come back, Dream should have been called. Well, I mean, think about it. The, the, the three stars of that season, bar none, were Dreams, Yao Man, and Earl. Yao Man came back for fans versus favorites. Earl was asked to come back for winners at war, but just had a kid and declined. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, like, it, it, it's not as though that season's completely 100% ignored. Uh, so, yeah, I'm sh- I, like, I just assumed that the, that dreams would have been like, no, nah, they called me for this and then it didn't work out. They called me for this and it didn't that's, work out. That's so what I was maybe, expecting. To maybe do. you change numbers and they don't have your number, dreams. <laughs> man, nah, man, they they know how to get in touch with me, man. You dropped yourself they, in, in the I, truck. They got the thing. same email. They got in touch with me email back then, so they yeah. can get in touch with me email if they they need it. They still got my they still got my email. Wait, what, maybe what they you, don't. What do you think about black representation on Survivor? in recent seasons what do you mean uh well i mean like uh, a a lot of a lot of people would say that they don't feel it's been a, a balanced cast of minorities since cook islands and fiji okay, okay. um uh, well check this out here's the thing you know i mean what i was always taught which you can't get mad over other people's stuff now, I've never been mad about the imbalance because my season, we had perfectly balanced thing. But if you look at Big Brother, you look at anything, they don't have balance of anything. It's like 
one black dude and they make sure to get the fat black dude or or the the the, the black dude that's like real stupid or stereotype black dude or you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and they just get one of them. So when when people get rid of that one, there is no more. Or they'll get a black girl that that no one likes and she can't compete, or she'll be just too sassy. They'll get rid of her for popping off, and then there's no more. Or they'll get a black girl and a black guy. But they got a hundred white dudes, a hundred white girls. You get what I'm saying? So I don't mm-hmm. think any of those shows are fair balance. I'm I'm sure like, but here I I can't complain because I mean I don't see any Hispanics on there at all. You know, some shows go whole seasons without having even one Asian on. So I mean. I guess my complaint would be, uh, and and it's not my show. It's, I'm not televising it. I'm not like, so my junk could be in vain. So though they're not doing it equally, I mean, it's not for me to say if y'all can see it, right? So I don't have to say it I, uh, if everybody sees it. It's, it's, no, it's no need for me to complain about it. It's not my stuff. I can't, I'm not complaining about your shirt and being like, well, man, I, I had a shirt just like that. I, Man, I don't like your shirt, man. I don't, I don't like what it represents. It don't look good on you. I, it, it's just, it, I can't complain about other people's stuff. Though, it'd it be, some people's job is to do that. That's just not my spot to be uh, going public saying how unequal I feel about, you know what I mean? That's just, it's whatever. Yeah, right, I right. But so, I like to be called back, too. So, you know, I'm, yeah, I, no, too, you know, totally. Yeah. So did you kind of disappear off of the survivor community after your season? Like Johnny and I, you know, go to a lot of charity events and are doing this podcast and involved like post survivor. Did you just go back to normal life and live your life? Did you, or did you partake did. in those events? I did. But, but you know what? I went on some charity events too. Um, I started actually dating Nayanka from one season. Mm. Uh, Oh yeah, Nicaragua from Nicaragua. Yeah. We didn't do the same season, um, but uh, my girlfriend over here all mad. So so yeah, what else? But uh, <laughs> next question. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll have Nianka on next week to throw you under the bus. It'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, but that's I met her at one of those charity events. You know, yeah. wasn't it? Wasn't it the one in uh, Virginia? The the dog Virginia. rescue. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, you were there, fair play. Yeah, we met at that one. Yeah, yeah. I remember. <laughs> hey, <laughs> man, I'm not going to talk about it. We'll <laughs> go ahead. I, 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 I... No, 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 no. You was were the... there with your kid and your family and junk, right? I was. Andy Dick was there. There was a. Uh, there was a lot that of. Movie. Guy, let me tell you, that guy is like uh, the worst dude in the world. <laughs> oh, please explain. <laughs> Man, I ain't gonna even get into his. He called somebody the N word there. What? Oh, Andy yeah. Dick did. Oh man, come on, man! Don't act like y'all. That boy has got a problem. A real problem. Oh well, he was a mess, but I won't hang in. He was with sugar. I, 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 I was, I was being my own mess, and I won't drop in any of bobs. She was all apologizing because of what he was saying. I'm like, yo, listen, you ain't gotta apologize for that man. That man, if he was sorry, he would come say that, y'all. That's but, fucking you know, insane. Like that's that's just a word. Like he was a mess. Like I would yeah. never, I, I would yeah. never fucking like ever use derogatory wor- words like that and nor would like my kids are taught like my kids would never say that shit so andy dick someone who obviously there's all this attention at these events dude like that's gonna get out there that, that's shocking to me like what kind of fucking dumbass would do something like that i don't, I don't think nobody really made a big deal out of it. i think i, I think as i said i, I, I didn't think- i didn't i didn't hear him say it as i said i was I was, there, there was, there was a lot of moonshine at that event. I was with uh, Chase Rice most of that event. <laughs> that was a good choice. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I so no, I, I just, I just heard, I heard, uh, I saw, I saw Andy briefly. He was a mess, and then I heard he continued to make an ass out of himself. So man, I mean, he, he was, he was bad off. He, the boy, really got a problem. I'm telling you, I, I, I didn't make too. Like I said, I didn't make a deal about it. I was with Brian O. Pray or however you say it. Oh, Rhino, right yeah. But uh, and uh, what's her name? Dang it, Sugar. 
the Italian girl that he was dating at the time? Oh, uh, oh she was on Survivor. Uh, Mary yeah, Sartain? Huh? Mary? Nope, that's not her name. It was a cool name, but I can't remember it now. Oh, Camilla? Cam- Camilla? No. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway. Wait, wait, so, what up? No, but anyway, right, uh, yeah, well, I'm sure Rhino had your back. Rhino, Rhino's a, a, a decent dude. Yeah, he was cool. I, we didn't yeah. care, man. We was having such a good time, man. We just carried on, man. That's why it didn't that's get out because move, no though. one cared. That's a shitbag move on Andy's part, though. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, he kind of a crappy person. Yeah, well, there, he, he may or may not have been underneath the bed while I was having sex on top of it. Yeah. See? Not there. At another. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you told the story on our Patreon. So, yeah. listeners, if you guys want to hear the behind-the-scenes shit that we don't say on this podcast, you definitely want to go Patreon. Johnny, tell people where they can get that. Go go to patreon.com slash survivor and SFW. Uh, you get you get added to our secret Facebook group. We do a weekly QA. We have weekly trivia. We have a monthly survivor ORGs. It's uh it's really awesome. Try it for one month and you will hear the story about how potentially Andy Dick was underneath the bed I was having sex on top of. And I still don't know what to this day whether he was or not, but I'm pretty sure he was. <laughs> what are you peeping peeping Tom and you? No, no, I, 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 I uh, uh, what's it's he doing not, under the bed? No, he ain't the boogie man. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, it, it was not my bed. It was this other girl's bed, and okay, alleged, what was he doing under there? Allegedly, sometimes he would go underneath there. Oh my! God. What's he doing under there? <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing jerking off. God, this you guy. gave her some new material, huh? <laughs> I mean, I don't like. As I said, I never because like she was just like she's like. Just, just a heads up. Potentially, Andy, Andy Dick is underneath my bed masturbating, <laughs> and I'm like, "What huh? a kook, dude! What a kook!" <laughs> and, and, and she was like, "He does it. So don't, don't worry about it." And I'm like, "I'm kind of worried about it." And then, like, I wanted to look, but I'm just like, "The last thing I need to see is that." <laughs> so, so I didn't look. Oh, right? Would you have looked? Absolutely not, man. You got to finish and continue your business, man. <laughs> That's where I was you at. You mess the little mood up. It, it won't help, and I assure you that. <laughs> so so what is next for Dreams, man? Obviously, you'd love to go back on Survivor or play the challenge. Do you got anything uh, exciting coming up in your life? Man, it's so hard with this uh, COVID right now, man. So everything is kind of paused. Here's the thing about COVID, though. You know how the UFC is still throwing fights? Yeah, they, they, have like, they, they have like the Fight Island. You, you, no, but for the Fight Island, they, they just send everybody to this thing. They isolate them and uh, they're in Las Vegas okay. uh, right now. And, then, and so until Fight Island is finished, and it's not complete yet, but until it finished, now they're in Vegas and they isolate them. for. They get tested before they come down. They all come down and get isolated. So yeah. until the test come back. The test come back positive, they can fight. If not, even the cornermen, everybody get tested. Yeah. And then even the staff get tested and then they still are made to wear a mask. And then, so I think seriously that big brother could do that same thing. Get everybody tested, isolate them. Oh, they are. They're, 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 the house. they're, they're about to get, I, I, what, what, what are they talking Zach? Uh, July uh, like 29th or something. Yeah. The 29th. So, so they'll, they'll go into quarantine the beginning of July. And they need to get a jump popping right now. It's summertime, man. Yeah, well, I mean, they're they're looking to start July 29th. So, I mean, you got you they got, mess up my big brother for the summer, man. I'm gonna be mad. It's coming. Are you are you gonna be watching every episode? We're we're gonna be covering it every uh, every episode. If you want to join us on some of them, all right, all right yeah, hit me up. I'm gonna definitely watch it every episode because my girl. Excellent. Has- Sweet. I'm excited to have dreams as coverage. Yeah. <laughs> now, I never fell off the planet of the Earth, man. It's just sometimes when I get off of work or when I finish training people, I'm like, oh, I get home and I'm like, I don't even. I can't touch my phone. It's like, uh, it's just, yeah, looking through Facebook, I can scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and I'm like, all right, I'm bored. I can't, I can't see, <laughs> sit here and watch everybody else, what they doing. You know right. what I'm saying? All right, so, so are, is that the only social media you're on, Facebook? No, I got Instagram, too. I don't have a Twitter, because I don't feel like managing three of those things, three accounts. Okay, okay so where can they find you on Instagram? Uh, Dreams Heard. Okay. And and then uh, okay, and then Dre heard on on Facebook. Mm-hmm. All right, sweet. So uh, 
it, it, uh, you want to you want to send a message out to all your fans that have been that have uh, been been rooting for a, a comeback, a return, a, a, a the second coming of dreams. <laughs> I wish, man. I'll tell you what, fans. If you're watching, you want me to come back. Don't tell me because it does absolutely nothing. Go tell the person that's in charge. Tell them that you want to see dreams again. I want to see them again too. Well, I want to see dreams. I want to see you. I mean, shit, you're 38 years old now, which was I think the exact same age I was when I played my season of Survivor my first time, and I think Lex Vandenberg was 38 when he played his first time. So shit, man, like you're in the prime of your life, dreams, right now. So I cannot wait to hopefully see you on Survivor or potentially even uh, maybe uh, Flora's Lava with, uh, with some of us, <laughs> which we'll talk yeah. about when we, when we end this podcast. And now we'll take a quick break to hear a word from our sponsors. Summer here, it's crazy hot outside, and after a few minutes, I feel exhausted and I'm ready for a nap. What? I'm 46 years old, I can't be taking naps. Between the sun beating down and the heat and humidity, dehydration kicks in fast hydrant is your key to getting back up and running more quickly than ever before hydrant created a refreshing electrolyte powder that you mix directly into water to efficiently and effectively hydrate your body it hydrates you quickly and keeps you going for longer each rapid hydration mix has the four essential electrolyte electrolytes your body needs sodium potassium magnesium and zinc and it packs a punch to help your body hydrate fast and to stay hydrated and if you're looking for an extra boost of energy man like in survival when we're doing challenges i wish we had hydrant dude because hydrant contains hydrant plus caffeine 100 milligrams of caffeine from green tea and you know what it's backed by research. This formula was developed by an Oxford scientist. It is also loved by pro athletes, top performers, celebrities, and has thousands of five-star reviews. It's made with real fruit juice powder. It's delicious and refreshing and comes in a variety of flavors, including new summer-friendly iced tea lemonade and fruit punch. Damn! That just makes me want to like down these things right now plus it's backed by 100 satisfaction guarantee you guys if you don't love it send it back for a full refund you really need to try it for yourself to see what i'm talking about it tastes incredible and it works so johnny this thing it's the hydrant starts at just a buck a packet for a 30 day supply save even more with a monthly subscription so well, I'm preparing for a half marathon at the end of the summer. I'm running three to 10 miles every day. I was doing just the water. I was trying the water and other stuff. Boom, added hydrant to my life. My run times are going down faster. I'm playing, I'm in a tennis league every Saturday morning. I tried hydrant for the first time, did the blood orange, loved it, won for the first time. Usually I'm getting whooped by these other people. Not so fast. I took my hydrant, I was ready to go cannot prove that this is scientifically a fact that will make you a greater tennis player but looking at johnny Fairplay, it does i am an, an, an exceptional player when i got my hydrant in me and i can't wait to have that hydrant power me through these next few weeks going to that half marathon in Asheville, north carolina so uh we've got a special deal zach tell them all about it where can they save if they go to drinkhydrant.com slash survivor and enter our promo code survivor at checkout, they're going to save 25% off their first order. So again, that's drinkhydrant.com slash survivor and enter the promo code survivor. That's D-R-I-N-K-H-Y-D-R-A-N-T dot com slash survivor. Promo code survivor for 25% off your first order. The reopening is right around the corner, and there's a chance that no one has seen your balls in a few months. Don't ruin your first post-quarantine date with a ball fro. Would you show up to the first day of school without a haircut? Dude, I tell you what, Zach, Manscaped is here to provide you the best tools for your grooming experience. 
And dude, every time that I'm like, man, shit's getting a little fucking hairy. I look down and I say, I need to use the Manscaped Lawnmower 3.0, which is the best hygiene tool for the modern man. And because of the ceramic blade and skin safe technology, your snags will be reduced while preparing yourself for post quarantine life. And Manscaped is forever changing the grooming game with their Perfect Package 3.0 Essentials Kits. The Perfect Package 3.0 comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 water resistant cordless body trimmer, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag for you to use when we are done quarantining. The Perfect Package 3.0 also comes with a Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver. The Crop Preserver is an anti-chafing ball deodorant, which ensures that your afternoon stroll doesn't end up with your balls sticking to your leg, which is never a good thing, guys. The Crop Reviver is a spray-on toner for your balls. It's made with soothing aloe and witch hazel extracts that will give your balls a boost. And subscribers to the Peak Hygiene Plan get a new replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months, making sure your trimmer stays fresh and clean. The light is at the end of the tunnel, fellas. Treat yourself for making it through quarantine with a lawnmower 3.0 and get 20% off plus free shipping with promo code what fair play that they all love survivor go to manscaped.com m a n s c a p e d.com get 20% off with promo code survivor manscaped.com that's 20% off with free shipping and use promo code survivor and your first date will thank you Hey, I don't know what's going to get you action down there, but I know what won't, and that's having a big old bush. They don't want to see it. Quarantine's over. Clean it up. Go to manscaped.com. Use promo code SURVIVOR. Guys, remember the days when you were always ready to go? Oh, man, do I. I've been taking four or five blue chews just to get up in the morning. I use it. I uh, w- w- Remember when you, what's it called on a, on a bike? The kickstand? Mm-hmm. I have my own kickstand thanks to Blue Chew. Thanks, guys. <laughs> well, you at home can increase your performance and get that extra confidence in bed just like me. Listen up. Blue Chew. B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. That's blue. It's color blue. Blue Chew brings you guys the first chewable with the same FDA-approved active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, so you know they work. You can take them anytime, day or night, even on a full stomach. And since they're chewable, they work up to twice as fast as a pill, so you can be ready whenever an opportunity arises. If you could benefit from extra function and more confidence where it counts in the wiener area, Blue Chew is a fast and easy way to enhance your performance. And Blue Chew is prescribed online, shipped straight to your door in a discreet package, so no in-person doctor visits. No waiting in the pharmacy, and best of all, no more awkwardness. They're made in the USA, and since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. Right now, we've got a special deal for our listeners. Visit BlueChew.com and get your first shipment free when you use our promo code SURVIVOR. Just pay $5 shipping. Again, that's B-L-U-E-Chew.com, promo code SURVIVOR, and you can try it completely for free. Just pay for shipping. Blue Chew's the better, cheaper, fastest choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the podcast. Man, these guys are great. BlueChew.com. It's, it's kind of like uh, kind of like a hurt Peter. They're hard to beat. Podcast, but Dreams, it's been a pleasure, man. It's it's cool on this podcast. You know, Johnny and I have got to interview a lot of cool people, and it's cool to catch up with guys like you that aren't necessarily hardcore within, you know, going to all these events all the time and whatnot. So it's it's been really killer having you on the podcast. And I wish you the best of luck, dude, in, in whatever you do in your future endeavors, bro. All right. Thank you, brother. Yeah, man. I appreciate it.